so I can edit anything out at any point. I can take the video down. Um, thousands of people will see this interview. You okay with all that? Sure. Sure. So basically you, you, you have, you had uh, prostate cancer with metastatic cancer to the bones. And what, when were you first diagnosed with any hints of uh, cancer? That was September 13th of 2022. Okay. And then you have the CT report right in front of you. Yeah, the nuclear med report. This is um, <clears throat> from September 28th of that same year. Yeah, what's that say? It says there are innumerable sites of abnormal abnormal bone turnover consistent with widespread osseous metastatic disease. That's the simple part of it. It gives a little more detail, but um, basically it's the axial and appendicular skeleton is everywhere. You know, a little up like a Christmas tree, it sounds like. And now this one is what three weeks June twenty ninth, twenty twenty three. Okay, so it says marked improvement in the extensive abnormal tracer uptake in the axial, which is here, and then appendicular, right, which is about here. Yeah, legs and arms, skeleton, fusiform residual uptake remains in the right posterior eighth rib and left anterior sixth rib, and subtle tracer uptake elsewhere in the ribs remaining as well. So a little bit modest abnormal tracer uptake in the right humerus, in the arm, and minimally in the left. Interval reduction in the extent and intensity of tracer uptake in the mid back and lumbar vertebral body. So the spine cancer is going away. Yeah. Likewise, abnormal tracer uptake in the pelvis is reduced, and the abnormal tracer uptake seen in the femurs is no longer seen. Focus of tracer activity in the proximal right tibia is less conspicuous. So lower leg is going away. Anyways, marked improvement. So here I'm on Google. I'm going to type in can. You reverse uh, metastatic bone cancer. Although it is not possible to cure bone mets, it is not possible to cure bone metastases. That's what Google says. So good job. You're reversing it. That's unbelievable. It's crazy. It's awesome. I think, yeah, it is crazy. It's crazy good. <laughs> yeah. So let's walk through... In the last 12 months, or actually 11 months, um, what you've been doing to reverse your prostate cancer and metastatic bone cancer? Okay. Well, once I learned about this, um, my urologist told me that it's inoperable. There's no no point in doing a prostatectomy because it's the cat's out of the bag. So he recommended um, an antigen deprivation therapy and I asked him about that, is it curative or palliative? And the doctor told me it's purely palliative. So I thought, well, that buys me some time, but it doesn't solve my problem. So I uh, learned about the uh, Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor through a family friend and got in touch with you and came to see you i think it was in early october and uh, you went over some findings with me on the 18th of that month of 2022 and uh, i decided well that sounds plausible and uh, i decided to um, take you up on your program so let me for, uh, interrupt here and just make sure i have a legal disclaimer i'm a chiropractor i don't treat any disease i, I don't treat cancer um, i put people on nutritional programs to, regardless of their health status and we improve um, the nutritional status of the human body. We also can detoxify metals, chemicals, and help the immune system get rid of organisms such as parasites, bacteria, virus, et cetera. So we're not treating any parasites. We're not treating any bacteria. We're, it's all about nourishing the body and cleaning it out. And then the body can start to heal itself. There's my disclaimer. Yeah, you explained that very well, Dr. Schmidt, to me. And uh, that's what I thought, too, is I need, to, I need to fix my terrain, as I thought. You know, that I can improve my vitality, my wellness. And I would expect that uh, some good healing might occur or would occur over time. So that would, that's what my expectations were. So then what? So you started with me. What was the first um, significant change or, or result that you remember? Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, as the program developed, I noticed that I didn't need these uh, antiviral and parasitic supplements any longer. That was a good thing. I did feel improvement there, just a, a, a better feeling of more strength and, and wellness, uh, not dragged out, I guess, as much. And along with careful attention to my diet, as you recommended, I do a pescatarian diet. So I uh, really worked hard to uh, hold to that. And um, 
just let things uh, run its course in this way with the supplementation and the uh, in the diet. Tell me more details uh, about. Tell me about knowing that you didn't need the su those supplements anymore. What did you feel, or what? How did you know? As, as I would come to visit you, as you know, you would do some evaluation using some muscle testing, and my body response indicated that they were not uh, required. So we would leave them behind over time as uh, as the program progressed. And you felt your, but you felt you were feeling better and better in some ways. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I was. I'm definitely feeling. Myself, I guess, you know, prior yeah. to the senior office, it's pretty dragged out. <laughs> my anemia improved. That's one thing I noticed. My I have this chronic anemia with this, and that that's that's improved tremendously. It's it's a little bit low still, but you know, I you're talking about the blood yeah. test, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. And did you actually get parasites coming out of your body? Uh, I didn't see any. Days went by. I didn't observe that. Okay. All right. But, and then the, and then the um before the pescatarian diet which we're going to, have to talk about that, but that's from this book to do the pescatarian diet with prostate cancer. Um, before then, what was your diet like? Before I got serious about trying to detox, so I was just eating fast food on occasion. Um, beef was in the, on the plate. I'd eat beef a couple, a few times a week. Uh, not a lot of vegetables, some. I uh, tried to improve on those. Um, a lot of simple uh, grains. So the, the grains are not complex. I guess you could say uh, after, when I found out about my condition, I, I went to a vegan diet for a time in August of last year to uh, try and see if I can improve on that, my energy levels. Some juicing too. But you added in like some of the, you added in fish and some wet chicken, some birds. Yeah, well, with the pescatarian focus on, yeah, fish, chicken. Uh, vegetables. Okay, so when you added in the meat, the, the fish, chicken, did you feel better in some way, or did it not matter? Um, I noticed a little bit of energy improvement. Okay. I, I, I couldn't correlate it with that because of just how I felt overall. It was kind of like, you know, I thought this whole program, you know, with the supplementation, improved my nutritional status and the parasites and perhaps viral infection, that sort of thing. Um, you know, it was a composite or a whole program that was turning things around for me. Yeah. So over the last year, did you have some kind of a pain or pains in your bones from the cancer that like gradually went away or could you feel it in some I would, way? I would get, I would get leg pain. That's okay. all. And small back, uh, lower back, you know, the uh, lumbar area. Yeah. <clears throat> and now that pain's gone? Um, I, I'm vigorously doing yard work right now. It's early August and I'm out there taking care of the flowers and such. And I, I don't have any problem with my back. You know, I, it's good. Um, once in a great while, I get the tibial pain, as I call it, in the right leg. That's where some persistent metastasis is still residing. Um, yeah. I call it my unwanted visitor, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's it my, you know, I think it's been about a week since I've had one. So those they're, they're infrequent now compared to it was it was almost daily yeah uh, they're getting me out of bed at night they're so sharp yeah okay so based on this book how to start cancer by jay mcclellan she basically teaches how to go on pubmed and search around for the name of the cancer plus a therapy that blocks how that cancer eats food okay so fat proteins carbs cancer eats food just like humans but there's but there's 21 pathways that these cancer cells could eat. And so different cancers in diff at different stages have different numbers of pathways. So it could be all the way up to 21. So basically I went through PubMed, I found some supplements, herbs can block the feeding pathways for, for prostate cancer. And again, I'm not treating prostate cancer, we're just dealing with nutrition. And then I sent you to right. Care Oncology, right? Yes, yeah, that, I appreciate that. Uh, that was um, in early December of yeah. 2022. I signed on with them. Those are medical doctors, and they do the drug aspect of this. Yeah, Off-label <laughs> drugs, yes. Right. Uh, sometimes off patent to, um, for, okay. And there's um a number of drugs that they're that they love more than others, but an antiparasitic drug, sometimes a cholesterol lowering drug, antibiotic, sometimes, um, a painkiller that can. Uh, kill uh, or, or starve cancer cells. 
So tell us um, your experience with them. What did they give you? What was your program with them? Yeah, care oncology uh, was pretty interesting. They I did a telemed conference with a doctor in uh, South Dakota, and one of his specialties was prostate cancer. He focused a lot on that in his uh, his medical uh, experience. So he prescribed four of these uh, off-label drugs as metabolic blockers, as uh, I call them. Uh, metformin, I take 500 milligrams twice a day, a day uh, of metformin. And uh, atorvastatin or Lipitor is another one, a 40 milligram tablet once a day. I take that at bedtime. Um, doxycycline, 100 milligrams once a day. And Mabendazole, which uh, was a 224 milligram tablet or, or a capsule rather, I take that once a day. Okay. So spread so, out. Yeah. So it's a little bit at once. So the goal is to lower blood sugar, kill parasites. Well, metabendazole can kill parasites. The doxycycline antibiotic, and then the atorvastatin to lower the the fat in the blood. So you're lowering sugar, lowering fat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's this there spectrum map Jane has. You know, so we're concentrating on this triangle: the the glucose, the glutamine, and the fatty acids. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. You can tell That's we're fans because we got the metro map right in front. <laughs> yeah. So coincidentally, the, you know what the doctor from oncology prescribed for me it's like i feel like he piggybacked on what you're already doing because i've been taking berberine and green tea catechins and um what was the other one uh the, i was already at this triangle from the three sides implement so yeah. i'm doing it from two perspectives you know which i think is pretty cool right now i saw a video of jane mcglellan talking about the use of the supplements versus the drugs and she says you have to use the drugs. That was maybe three months ago or four months ago. So now with the anti, with the, you said febendazole or fenben. Febendazole. Febendazole with an M. Did you get parasites out that you actually saw like worms? No, I did not. Okay. So I'm just, I'm bringing this up because you can have small microscopic parasites and they could be inside the cells or not. Okay. But obviously we have these positive changes and um, in my 30 years of studying natural health care, I think that uh, cancer is parasites, bacteria, mold, and then too much sugar over too much time, um, you know, sugar, uh, sugar metabolism. I also think seed oils, but, you know, junk food, right? So you got to, and then underlying all that, there's some toxicity. And the toxicity could be from, you know, junk food, but it could be chemicals or metals. So that that's it. Like, that's kind of like the synopsis of what cancer is. It's not, you know, you can't say it's, oh, you can't just say it's genetic. You know, because 100 years ago, hardly anybody had cancer. And I was like, one in three get cancer. Pretty telling now, isn't it? Um, coincidentally, um, I had a root canal removed from my number eight tooth. Uh, I did that just before I came in to see. I had done research. I was just looking for avenues of, well, what's going on here? What could be uh, dragging me down, so to speak? And uh, my, my uh, dentist was not a fan of root canals. And we had talked about that previously. I went in and had a panoramic x-ray, and uh, it looked suspicious, as he said, so I had him extract my number eight front tooth, which coincidentally on the energy meridians is on my genital urinal tract system. Uh, so when my dentist removed the, uh, the tooth and cleaned out the, the bone there, he said that my bone was uh, like hard cheese. It wasn't oh, wow. hard and rock-like. And, and he said, at the end of the root, he showed me the end of the root. It looked real bad. So he said, yeah, you had a low-grade infection here. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, well, I probably had a lot of toxins, you know, coming out of this for, I've had that since probably, I think it was 2012, I had a root canal done. People think, oh, I don't want to lose my front tooth, you know. But So I think that was a good thing I had just before I walked into your office. I was, um, you kind of made reference to that. That's probably a, in the mix would might have been the, the cause one of the causes of dressing my body up like this. right so and i'm glad you brought that up because i just and i just brought this from home but this is a lecture from weston a price the president of the american dental association 1916 talking about how an infection here can cause cancer anywhere in the body or any kind of disease arthritis intestinal issues and then there i got this manuscript from a patient i was going to do a video about this um his dad in 1947 wrote about the mechanism as to how that root canal can cause prostate cancer or placking in the heart. So you have this infection and they're pumping, you know, the organisms are pumping out mucus and chemicals, which then go to a different location in the body. And there could be no yeah. bacteria in the in the 
in the prostate, for example, but yet it's the, it's the mucus and chemicals. And then the, and then the body's got to deal with that mucus. Oftentimes it'll turn into stone. So that's how plaque occurs in the heart. People get arthritis, people, kidney stones, gallstones, osteoarthritis, um, bone spurs. That's all calcification of tissue caused by the body dealing with the mucus, you know? So yeah, but it, it is possible that that one root canal could be the sole cause of your prostate cancer. Could be. Yeah, that's, um, that's interesting is my CT scan I had of my diaphragm abdominal area in the findings, it mentions, um, it looks like a calcification of the prostate. It, 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 I was looking for, I, I had the report in front of me here. Oh, it said that the prostate's not enlarged, but I don't know, that doesn't make sense because my urologist said it was. Your DRE he said, oh yeah, it's large. It's hard. He said it's hard. He used yeah. a description on it. It's not soft. Oh, on, a, on another note, uh, one of the findings where I was having um, a ureter obstruction, ureter or urethral obstruction of my right kidney due to the the uh, the tumor disrupting the bladder anatomy. And, so, so the uh, urine. Has, so wait, hang on. So the urine from the kidney to the bladder was being disrupted. Yeah, there was a stricture, as my neurologist called it. It wasn't allowed to flow down. Um, and it was causing it to back up the urine and swelling the kidney, hydronephrosis. Um, so he kind of treated me with this urinal stent um, over time and starting in October. I had that finally removed, by the way, in the middle of June. It was June 16. And the, the, uh, the obstruction, the bladder obstruction along with the ureter stricture has gone away. It's resolved. So I'm off of that now. So I think that's a good progress. That's too. huge. You know, yeah. That shows healing. To me, that shows healing of the body. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Making good progress here. Yeah. Did I have you on the um, melatonin? Yes, I am still doing that, actually. Um, concentrated melatonin was 80 milligrams three times a day. Um, might be 60. Might six, be 60. Uh, yeah, 60 milligrams three times a day from per, uh, Perfect Vitamins dot com melatonin max is the name of the product high dose yeah. now when people try to use melatonin to sleep there is somewhere between let's say three milligrams up to 10 milligrams per day but but we're talking for 180 180 milligrams per day for cancer and there's an amazing youtube video about this a guy talking about the research behind uh, melatonin and cancer and metastasis for like an hour so that's a super important therapy yeah, i and appreciate that I, i'm still doing that myself yeah yeah, did it affect your sleep? I don't know. That's a good question. I, I've never been a, a difficult sleeper. Usually, I lay right. down and I'm, I'm out. So yeah. I was didn't it, notice that. You know, I wasn't expecting. I, I'm taking it for my health, not for sleep. Right. Did it make you tired during the day? No. Right. No, I, so that, take, some, I take it during the day, and I don't notice any difference. Right. I have a lot of people in the high dose, um, 100, you know, 80 milligrams per day. It doesn't affect their sleep or their energy. But for some reason, the low dose is what people use, you know, 10 milligrams or less to, to fall asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You offered uh, vitamin B17, by the way, just recently. So I've been eating raw apricot kernels, the bitter ones, prior to that. And uh, I wasn't a big fan of them. I'd eat 10 of those a day, and they are, they are very bitter. So yeah. I, I appreciate that supplement coming into play. It's been about, I think, about a month now. Yeah. So I started carrying... Um, a brand is called Apricot. I think it's called Apricot Wow or Apricot Power. And um, so it's lateral vitamin B17. I didn't really, I wasn't a fan of B17 for a long time because I didn't see it work on anybody. But the truth is nobody was taking it until I did an interview of another patient who reverses intestinal cancer. And he went to Mexico and got a shot of B17. And that really helped him out. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, you're the, really the first person I know. And it, so anyways, I started carrying it. Um, so I'm glad you're on that. So Jim, let me ask you, um, I'm going to show, I want to share the screen and show your current supplement uh, list. Is that okay. cool? Okay. Sure. So here it is. So there's a probiotic, there's a prostate supplement with salt palmetto, um, green tea catechins, and you can drink green, green tea every day too. L-lysine helps with viruses, Prostex feeds the prostate, um, berberine does all kinds of magical things regarding cancer. Um, colostrum as like a super nutrient, uh, finish the carboxy that's carboxy for, um, 
my favorite detox product on planet earth. Here's a product from standard process, prostate PMG. And I'm not going to go into details about that, but it's amazing. Artemisinin, also antiparasitic and blocks cancer feeding pathways. Here's wormwood, antiparasitic with artemisia in it. So these two are related, artemisinin and wormwood. And then there's the B17, amygdalin, um, laetril. And then there's echinacea premium as a tonic and help the immune system get smart. And then I wanted to like scroll through <clears throat> the list of supplements that I found on, on uh, PubMed that block various prostate cancer uh, feeding pathways. There's metformin, berberine, there's a drug, there's a drug Lipitor, there's curcumin, turmeric, and these all these all this research. There's a drug three three bromopyruvate, more like a kind of like a metformin to lower blood sugar, and then um, T e, ECGC is yeah, the name of the catechin. right rosalic acid, resveratrol, another blood sugar lowering drug, quercetin, pescatarian diet. There's a research on that. There's artemisinin. There's the uh, pro, um, antiparasitic medication that you got from Care Oncology. The medical doctor is using the medications based on the How to Start Cancer book. And then um, regarding metastasis, Tagamet. Have you ever taken Tagamet? No, I have not. Uh, I asked my oncologist doctor from Care Oncology about that in, in May when I had my last telemed with him. And um, he was not real taken with that for some reason. I, you know, I, I, um, he said, no, not at this time. You know, it sounded like he was not interested in me taking it. So. Okay. So here it says um, in this review on PubMed, Tagamet, the most studied H2RA, which is for um, acid reflux, has been demonstrated to possess anti-tumor activity against colon, gastric, and kidney cancers and melanoma, melanoma uh, liver metastasis, malignant gliomas, glioblastoma. Here's some anticoagulant drugs right here regarding just breast, breast cancer. Warfarins and heparins also have anti-tumor and anti-metastatic effects. And then here's melatonin. So anyways, this is the data that any doctor can grab. They can read this book. Any patient, if you have cancer in your patient, you have to just get this book and start reading it and then um, start gathering the data. And Jane McLellan um, has an amazing um, Facebook group. There's Jane. And they just have tons of information. Yeah, her, her own personal journey is quite a story that she shares in her book. Um, quite a lady. I gave her credit for what she stood up for. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So what else um, can you share with us regarding your experience in the last 11 months? I can say my uh, urologist is very happy with my progress. Yeah. He's pretty open minded. I fed him some information. I've given him information. Uh, I handed him uh, one of my recommendations from you for, for my program and uh, recommended he take go on PubMed and read a little bit if he's got the time. But I, I just gave him specifics too. And he said, well, just keep doing what you're doing if it's working for you. He's, he's pretty um, Pretty, uh, I can see amenable with that. He goes along, uh, which I appreciate that because I, I do, I do feel that you know my urologist helps me in like my physical condition that I was dealing with the hydronephrosis and uh, taking good care of me with that. And uh, we're working on trying to get the, the urine flow a little better too. Um, I don't know if we can really do much more with that. I guess I'm hopeful that the nutritional supplements will improve with that over time. Yeah, I'm going to look at I'll look at that next visit. So didn't um the urologist um oh yeah, you were at the, the very first thing you said was you started a drug to lower your PSA. Not Lupron though, right? It was something else. Well yeah, he's he's giving me a Elegard. Okay. And that's a shot or a pill? Yeah, it's a every three month intermuscular shot. So that's turns me into I call it a chemical eunuch. Right, because your PSA, what was your, what was your PSA, the highest? Oh, Did it go down? That's to? quite a, yeah, I was at 340 in um, September of that year, of 2022. And now it's, uh, I just had it done um, in May. Uh, it was 3.02. Okay. Normal is zero to 4.0. So I'm in the normal range, but I'm not to where I'd like to be yet. Uh, I'm coincidentally going to get another uh, round of uh, his ADT panel, androgen panel. That's coming up uh, at the end of this month on the 24th of August. So I'm hopeful that um, I can get down below one. That's what I'd like to see is my PSA less than one. Yeah. It used to be 
And then what about your testosterone levels? Uh, well, those those are below the measuring range of the uh, laboratory that's performing the test. It, yeah. It, you know, it's like used to be up in the three or 400 range. Now it's less than 20. So the testosterone can drive prostate cancer, but testosterone is not a cause for prostate cancer, right? The causes are these other factors right. I mentioned earlier. Yeah, it's considered a growth hormone to the tumor cells. So it's stimulative in that sense. Right. So it's important to get that down. So I'll be on that for a bit yet. Um, that'll be coming up. Uh, actually, in August, too, I have another another round of that coming up. Yeah. Along with another telemed visit with a care oncology, by the way, too. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And with those medications from care oncology, do you take them every day straight through or do you cycle them on and off? Uh, I take them daily. Okay. I don't I don't cycle them. It's daily. Um, and the uh, pharmacy in Texas... Uh, Pharmacy Solutions is the company in Texas. They send me the script. Um, a month supply. Every 30 days, they'll resupply me. And they're pretty cost-effective, too. I'm pretty pleased with that. So <laughs> that's kind of like where we're at right now. Yeah. Okay, so when you look back in the last, I know you are diagnosed a year ago, but if you look, look back in your lifetime, what do you think is the, I'm not trying to get into emotions. I'm looking at physical. Sure. What's the cause of your prostate cancer? Well, I'm very, uh, I'm very suspicious about that root canal. The root canal, okay. Because I was fine before that. Um, after I had that, in, that was in 2013, I believe it was. In 2014, no, 2015, I uh, came down with a round of prostatitis. Oh, boy. Something yeah. I haven't shared with you. And I used essential oils to, to uh, knock that down. And my PSA, I worked in a laboratory at the time. I had not retired yet. And my PSA was normal. But that was kind of like a little, maybe a little uh, indicator that something wasn't quite right. And that was within a year of when I had my uh, number eight root canal. Yeah. So uh, I really have been uh, quite suspicious about that as being a, uh, involved with that. Yeah. My, so let me ask about lifestyle choices. So let's say in the last 10, 20 years, um, did you eat a lot of junk food? Did you exercise? Like, what was your lifestyle? Well, no, I, I, I wouldn't concern myself in the processed food a lot. I, you know, I do nutritional balancing um, science with a, a doctor in Arizona. You know, a lot of vegetables, not eating restaurant food, and uh, trying to avoid sugars. I really knocked back my sugars. I, I, was, I, I used to be uh, quite the donut kind of sewer. So when did you quit that? A donut? Uh, yeah, I, I dropped all it. I dropped all that off uh, last year in 2022. Okay. I so would still get a don't even, uh, maybe once or twice a week, but uh, they're gone. You know, I don't even miss them now. Okay. I remember the last time I had a donut, but right for refined sugars, yeah. You know, it's they taste good, but they, they're not good for the body. You know, I'm sure that was a stress. You know? Yeah. So that could be like an underlying toxicity that would start off this process of needing a root canal. Then you got the root canal, then you got the infection. Sure. You know? And then, I think a lot of dental health. That's true. Yeah. And, you know, like when I look at the historical books, they're always looking at like sugar and refined grains being the primary cause of most chronic illness. You know, so we can't forget to make sure the diet is super clean and the diet is, you know, meat and some plants is the basis of it. Yeah. yeah I like to go for walks, you know, in our local park nearby with my wife. We do, uh, we do a lot of park walking. Um, when she's feeling better uh recently she's been a little down but a few times a week um i can just take care of the grounds around the house with some flowers and such so exercise yeah. that's kind of like what i do i don't really do an exercise program per se i probably should but it's never been a habit of mine uh, i enjoy that just just like being out and being active i guess is a good way yeah. to put it sounds good and then you said you worked at a lab at a hospital yeah i was a technical manager at a local uh Actually, the health facility that I go to for my uh, bone scans and such. Yeah. So, yeah, I did that for 40 plus years. You did that for 40 plus years? Yeah. That was a problem solving. I said it was technical. It was very like instrumentation, uh, different assays that required tweaking or, you know, they, they weren't working right. You know, maybe the quality assurance wasn't indicating accuracy or precision. So, we, uh, 
we'd have to fix those. I'd be called upon to just keep it all, keep all the train on the track, I guess. Is what I'd are, you, to do. are you an engineer? What's, do you have a degree like that? You no, know, my, my biology, I have a biology and a chemistry minor degree and then um, a supplemental education certification in medical technology. So that's laboratory medicine. So with, with that, with that background of 40 years working in a lab or technical like that, did that, how did that affect your process in the last 11 months of healing? I, I appreciated the, the access to the medical tests that I could see what was going on that indicated I better go get some help. You know, that was pretty, pretty quick. I, I think also it helped me appreciate there's, there's more than just the conventional medicine. I think it worked being being that close to it. Like I would talk with doctors a lot. They'd come in and ask questions about our testing menu and what should they order. That was a question that came up frequently. And I, I could see that, you know, they focus on this area here. They divide the body up in these, all these little subsections. And in the wholeness aspect, I thought it was lacking. That's one thing I appreciate this from working in uh, the conventional medicine uh, field. They do good though. There's a lot of good docs. I mean, they, they are very serious and dedicated to what they're doing. Um, and I appreciate that, but sometimes they get, they get this niche orientation here or niche, I guess you could say. Um, so that really encouraged me to just expand my, my horizon to see that how nutrition is important. Supplements are important. I, I did that all, all along. I focus on try to be better nutritionally and Take some supplements along the way and improve the, um, you know, the uh, wellness of the body, so to speak. Um, so that was that was a good experience, though. Definitely a good experience. Yeah, nice. So when's the next time you get a CT scan? Well, that's up to me. I asked my urologist, you can do that anytime you want. I thought it was only once a year, but uh, I'm probably going to do one in March of, of 2024. I'm going to. I'm going to give it about six okay. months, maybe yeah. seven. Sounds uh, good. And see where we're at then. Uh, that's yeah. kind of like what I'm thinking. Okay, good. So so basically, though, I mean, with this latest CT showing so much progress and the symptoms going away and the, all the good things happening, then um, it's just a matter of keep going. No need for any dramatic changes with any pills, supplements, or drugs. And then you're going to consult with care oncology doctor soon enough. And so then the visits get really boring, which is fantastic. You know, there's no like... Well, they've been kind of routine, I guess, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's like, because at the beginning, there could be there's always an urgent thing or something that's uh, more pressing that we need to tackle. But to keep it, you know, and now all those fires are put out and you're on that, that healing process of just stable improvement, you know, week after week. So keep going. That's what the message is. A lot of people, um, there's always like, a distraction. I call them speed bumps. You know, somebody catches a cold, they get food poisoning, they get some problem, they twist their ankle, they break their arm, and it, you know, you can't get derailed from your regular program for these speed bumps. You know, there's like this long road ahead that you know we have to keep your mind on. Right. Yes. Yeah. I am. I am definitely uh, dedicated to this um, for the sort of foreseeable future. And uh, I don't know. Speed bumps aren't. Uh, I had one coincidentally in November. December last year, after my first ur urinal stent uh, was installed, I came down with UTIs, uh, and I fought those for goodness. Um, it was probably mid. It was probably early November, and I into the first part of January, I was doing antibiotics on and off because I couldn't get rid of this. And my urologist told me, "Yeah, sometimes with the uh, with these stents that that happens." I thought, well, maybe my vitality wasn't up enough yet because I just, you know, recently started with this nutritional program with you and I hadn't started care oncology yet. Uh, that, that started in January 2023. So um, he did another stint in uh, late January and I'd been, I'd been okay with that one until it was taken out in June and I didn't need it anymore. My uh, nephros, hydronephrosis resolved in this, and according to my... Uh, CT scan of, or ultrasound rather, of the prostate that had resolved. I didn't need, uh, the stricture was gone and um, no hydronephrosis. So I thought that's, that's a bonus right there. There's my speed bump, I guess, if there was one. Yeah, I, for sure. I remember that. So did the, um, and this is, this is a 
Let me ask this question. Um, did the urologist ever say to you something about how you're doing compared to the other patients that he sees? Uh, no, he's not. He has not. Um, I'm going to ask him that question, coincidentally. I want to see him at the end of this month. I Just because I've made such good progress, I'm going to kind of really pick his brain, so to speak, and see what his observations are from his perspective. Um, I would think that I'm probably showing like, some pretty remarkable changes, um, especially this last bone scan. I, mean, I haven't talked to him about it yet. That's coming up at the end of this month. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to have a look to spend some time on my uh, con contrasting my my uh, my case with other cases that he's handling. Yeah. So the people that address their body nutritionally during their cancer treatments, my patients hear from their doctor quite frequently, you're doing better than anybody else, or you're doing, I had one doctor say, you're doing better than anybody I've ever seen in my whole career. I hear that all the time. So just adding that nutritional component. Most people are, you know, they're getting cancer treatments and they're eating junk food and they're eating ice cream and stuff. And it's like, well, boy, like you got to let you do anything I want. I asked him about that when I first saw him. He didn't recommend any dietary changes. I'm kind of like wondering, okay, well, <clears throat> I don't know if that's good, but um, yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the whole thing about this niche again. These doctors, they have they have a certain focus and they're not, I, I feel they could be a little more global on, on your uh, wellness. Yeah. Nature. Yeah. All right. Anything else, any other final thoughts or something else that you wanted to say? Well, I appreciate your, your assistance, Dr. Schmidt. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you're I don't think I'd be where I am right now without your input. So, uh, you know, kudos to you and uh, many thanks and uh, um, got a good operation running there. All right. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it.